All right, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the things that you can do with lists in Python. So I'll talk about what I think some of the most useful functions are when uh, operating with lists in Python, starting with uh, how to define a list. Now, what is a list in Python? Well, really, it's, uh, well, it's a data type, first of all, much like an integer or a floating point number or a string. It's a data type. And specifically, a list is an ordered set of elements. Now, those are often numbers, especially in a math class, but they could be other things too. They could be, for example, strings. Um, so that's what it is. It's an ordered set of elements. So to define a list, there's a very specific way we go about doing that. So I'll make a list here. I'll just call it list. You can call it anything you want. Uh, we need to use square brackets and we need to separate the elements in our list using a comma. So for example, just say I had some values I wanted in my list, five, nine, four, eight, three, two, six, seven. Good enough. That is the list. And of course, as we can do with the other data types, we can print that. So if I just hit print list and hit run, we should see our list, and there it is. Now, one thing that uh, that you might find uh, to be useful when working with lists in Python is to be able to reference the element at uh, a specific position in the list. So say we wanted Python to figure out what element is in the 110th position of the list. Of course, you don't want to sit there and, and count out 110 most likely, so you can tell Python uh, to figure out or go look up what's in that position. And to do that, uh, we, we just need to enter some very uh, a very simple command here. So for example, I'll call x our, uh, our desired value here. And let's say we are interested in figuring out what is in the fourth position of our little list here. Now, this is a small list. Of course, we could just look at it and figure out what's in the fourth position. But how could we get Python to, to figure that out for us, especially if we had a really long list or a list that wasn't right in front of us. So the first thing I need to do is write the name of the list, which is just list in our case. And I need to enter the index of the, um, uh, that corresponds to the position I'm interested in. Now, remember, the first element in a list has an index or a position of zero. So if I'm talking about the fourth element of a list, it will not have an index of four, it will actually have an index of three. So there's zero, one, two, three. Okay, so in square brackets, if I put three, what we're going to get here is x is going to be defined as um, the element that has an index of three. So that is the fourth position in this list, which is called list. And I'll just print that so we can see it. So we'll say print uh, x and we'll see what it gives us. Now we're expecting it to be eight. So let's see what happens. There it is, eight. Okay, so the, uh, the element with an index of three, which again is the fourth position in the list because it starts at zero, is, uh, is eight. Something else you might be interested in doing is uh, referencing just part of a list. So say we, we had a, a list, particularly if it was a long list or a list we, we didn't have right in front of our eyes. Say we just wanted to look at, say, maybe everything from element uh, number three to element number six. There's a way that we can do that. And again, it's a pretty simple, uh, simple function, some simple syntax that we would use here. Again, I'll call it x and I'll say I'm interested in the list, which I've called list everything from uh, the third position to the six. Now we got to remember the third position has an index of two and the sixth position has an index of five. It's always one less than kind of the position because the first position is zero for the index. And let's, uh, let's print that and see what we get. And surprise, surprise, there it is. We were expecting four, eight, three, because that's everything from uh, position or well, the, th the third to the sixth position. So index two to index five it just gives us that piece of the list. Another thing that you might find handy is uh, a function for counting how many elements are in a list, uh, especially if you're, you know, you have a large list and you don't want to count them out yourself. How can we do that? How can we count the, the number of elements in a list? Well, we can use um, a command which is called uh, the length, finding the length of the list. So again, we'll just call this result x. And if we want to find the length or the number of elements in this list here, we simply type len, which is short for length. And then in brackets, we put the name of the list we're interested in, which we've called list. So if we print that value here, 
which is uh, x, we should get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We should get 8 because uh, there are 8 elements in that list. Let's see. Boom. There it is. Perhaps you want to count the, uh, the number of times that an element appears in the list. So let me just uh, delete this and I'll modify the list a little bit. Let's put some, uh, some more fours in here. Maybe I'll put a four here, a four here, a four here. Oops, not a 74. And uh, maybe I'll put another four at the beginning of the list. It doesn't really matter. Say I wanted Python to figure out how many fours are in this list. Well, to do that, we, uh, we use a function called count. And then again, I'll call this result that we're going to get, I'll just call it x. And if I want to, to count how many times four appears in my list, I would use the, uh, the following syntax. The first thing I do is I'd give the name of the list I'm interested in, which in our case is just list. And then after a period, I would write or type count and then what it is that I want to count in brackets. So uh, I want to count how many fours there are in this list. And then we'll, so we can see the result, we'll just print X. So what are we expecting? Well, there's one, two, three, four, there's five fours. So we're expecting a result of five here. And there it is, okay? So that could be useful depending on what you're, uh, what you're writing a program for. You might want to figure out the first occurrence of an element in a list. So what, uh, at what index or what position is the, is the first time that something appears in the list? So let's, uh, let's modify our list again. Maybe I'll put a three here just for fun. And let's get Python to tell us where the first three occurs in this list. Again, we'll call the result X just to make things easy here. And to, uh, to figure out where the first three appears, we need to type the name of our list, which is list. And then after a period, we want to use the, the word index. Okay, it's going to tell us the index of the first three. And we want to know where the first three is. So we'll put a three in brackets. Let's print that result, which we're calling x and see what we get. Now, where, what are we expecting? Well, it's, this is, uh, this is an index of zero right here. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So although it's the sixth position in the list, it has an index of five. So we're expecting a result of five. That's the index where the, uh, of the first three in our list. Let's see what we get. Oh, there it is. Five. All right. Very good. Moving forward. Uh, perhaps you have a need, uh, for appending an element to a list that is attaching another element on kind of the, uh, the end of the list in, in the last position. And you can do that uh, very easily using the append function. So say we have our list here and we wanted to tag on the number 10 at the end of it. Uh, we can do that very easily. And what this, this um, function will do is it'll actually take this list and it will update it. So it will still be called list, but it'll have that new number at the end. And to do that, we just say the name of our list, which is list. And we use the function or the command append. Okay. And we want to append to our, uh, our list, which we're calling list, the number 10. So in brackets, we'll put a 10 and we'll see what we get now. Let's print that result. So I'm going to print the updated list, which I'm just calling, I've called list. So let's see what happens. We should get this list here with a 10 tagged onto the end. And there it is. So that worked like uh, worked like a charm. A few more here. You may wish to, and this is this can be really handy, create a list using some type of a formula or some type of a sequence. So for example, say we wanted a list of, uh, you know, a bunch of perfect squares. So we'll call this, let's just call it squares. And we want, uh, let's say all of the, the perfect squares starting with, uh, you know, zero squared up to six squared. So to do that, well, we're, we're talking about a list, so we're gonna wanna open up some square brackets. We want all of the x squareds uh, for x in range. Now this probably reminds you of a loop, right? For x in range. Now we want, um, how many is that? Well, we'll need seven of them. So if we want zero squared all the way up to six squared, that's seven values. So I'm just gonna put range seven. So what we're going to get here is uh, values of x squared for x, 
where x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all the way up to but not including 7, so from 0 through 6. And then we'll just uh, we'll print that and see what we get. So print squares. And we should see a bunch of perfect squares here. And there they are. 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way up to 6 squared. So that's kind of a handy way to do that, uh, to create a list using a formula, especially if, say, we wanted the first 100 100 squares, it would be really easy to do here uh, using this type of, uh, of sequence. All right, we've, uh, we've seen in another video how you can shuffle the elements of a list. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to use the random library. So if I import the random library, I'll be able to shuffle the elements of a list. So let's just make a list, I'll call it X for now. And we'll say that its elements are one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And if I wanna shuffle that, I need to say I'm using the random library and I'm using the shuffle function. So after a period, we write shuffle. And what is it that I wanna shuffle? My list, which is called X. And then I can print that. And what we should see is our list X here shuffled up. So these numbers will be in different position. Let's see what we get. And there they are, okay? It's just been uh, kind of reorganized. And last but not least, you may have a need to clear a list, that is to remove every single element from the list. So if I just get rid of all this, let's make ourselves a list, I'll call it list again. And let's say its elements are whatever, five, two, three, four, and seven. If for some reason I wanna clear that list, I can do that very easily. I just write the name of the list, which is list for us, and I say clear. And I have to have a, a set of brackets here. You don't need anything in those brackets. But now if I print that updated list, there should be nothing in it, okay? So that's what it's actually going to do here. It's gonna take this list, it's going to update it by clearing or removing all of those elements. So if I run this, we're, we're not expecting anything too exciting here. It's just gonna be an empty list. And there it is. So there's a, a bunch of functions that you might find useful uh, when, when working with lists in a program. Of course, there are many other ones out there. I just thought that these might be uh, some of the top ones uh, that you, you might like to know about. So I hope you find that helpful. There you go.